Hey, fourth grade, I'm here for a virtual counseling lesson, our second step lesson number eight, joining in. Okay, so last time we talked about conversation and compliments, and this week you're going to talk about joining in. So today we're going to start with a game using the walk, walk, walk video and count the number of times you hear the phrase, take a look and see what you're seeing. Okay, so let's listen. Okay, hey y'all, we're going to review the empathy poster. So empathy is feeling or understanding what someone else is feeling, looking at their face and body for clues. What's their point of view? How do they feel? How can you help? And what's a kind thing to say? So today we have a brain builder. It's called Merge Machine, and I'm going to describe it and see how best we can do this. Okay, today you're going to play a game called the Merge Machine. Here's how it goes. One person will start by making a movement that resembles a working machine. And then like you can like move your arms like a motion or a gear. And the next person will merge or join in by adding their own movement to the machine. So this is something that if you're at school, you can do. And if you're at home, you can watch. By adding their own movement to the machine, the next movement must make sense with one before because you're trying to create a single unit, a working machine. Each person, it's kind of like, um, it makes me think of like the supply, um, like Henry Ford, I can't remember what it's called, but like a chain, you know what I mean? The next movement must make sense with one before, because you're trying to create a single unit, a working machine. Each person in the class will add his or her movement until the machine is complete. Choose one student to start. Make sure there's adequate space for all students to stand and move safely. So if you're in the classroom, you can pause it right now and try this activity. So if you tried this activity, trying to merge in or join the machine can be challenging. Just like trying to join in a game or an activity that's already in progress. Like if you're at recess, I feel like that's a really great example. Maybe also PE. You have to be assertive and creative. Last time you learned how important it is to be assertive when making respectful conversation and giving and receiving compliments. Who remembers what it means to be assertive? Can you raise your hand? Assertive means to face the person you're talking to, to keep your head up and shoulders back, 
to use a calm for voice and respectful words, not to be rude, but also not to be shy. Today, you're going to continue being assertive while learning skills for joining in. So we're going to talk about the very first picture. Okay. And um, we're going to look at this friend and see what do you think he's feeling right now? He's probably feeling a little bit concerned or questioning if he should join in. We're going to watch um, three short videos. This boy's name is James, trying to join in a group of kids playing soccer. In each video, we're going to pay careful attention to what he's doing that is working or not working. Okay? So we're going to start. <laughs> I wanted to play soccer with some kids from So in the first video, James was feeling really left out. He was sad, lonely. He had a sad expression and his shoulders were slumped. And I think that he was standing around too long. He wasn't asking to join in loudly enough. Um, and he was too quiet and was being passive. And the group didn't even see him, right? So let's think about some things that the kids playing soccer could do to make it easier for James to join in. I'm wondering what they could do. After a minute, they might call on a few students um, and notice that he might want to play or, or like notice that there's kids standing around that might want to play or make room in the game for him. When you invite others or help others to join in an activity, you first need to notice that they want to join in. Next, you can ask them to join in or say yes to a request to join in, then help them feel included. So in this next clip, we're going to watch for what James does to join in. Okay? I said I was going to make them play with me. Who did they think they were anyway? Watch out! I'm playing forward! That's the ball! Okay, so this time the group probably did not want James to join because he was too pushy. He was extremely bossy. He wanted to run the game. He interrupted what they were doing and he was being aggressive. James is going to try again. Let's watch for what he does differently this time. Then I remembered something I learned in class about joining in groups. Nice shot. Yep, really nice shot. Your team is doing really well. Do you like playing goalie? It's okay. I'd rather play midfield. Mind if I join in the game? I can play goalie if you want to play a different position. Sure. Hey guys, James is going to play goalie for a while so I can play midfield. Okay, yeah. yeah. Alright guys. Okay, so James tried some different strategies this time. What are some things he did right? He stood nearby and watched for just a little while. He gave a compliment to one of the players. He asked a question about the game, and he asked politely if he could play. And he even offered to play goalie. He was assertive. These are the steps that helped James um, that James used to join in the group successfully. So now we're going to look at a checklist to see if that can help us also remember how to join in. Okay, so here is the checklist. Join in skills. Stand nearby, watch and listen. Give a compliment, ask a question, and offer to help. Assertively ask to join. Those are some really good ones. Okay, y'all, here is an activity that you can try together. Decide which of the three students in your group will be the joiner first. And which two students will be the group? And we're going to read the first scenario out loud. If you are the joiner, practice joining the group using the skills on the checklist below. After you practice being the joiner, check off the skills you used. If a skill was missed, practice again. 
Switch parts after a scenario until each person has had a turn as the joiner and two turns in the group. Write your own scenario, then follow directions above. So if you are in your classroom or if you're at home, you can pause this video and you can try it. So we're going to do the first one together. You would like to join a group in the library looking at pictures of extreme sports. So these are the join-in skills. So I'm going to go back to the scenario just so we know what it says. Okay, you would like to join a group in the library looking at pictures of extreme sports. So stand nearby. You can watch and listen. And you, let's practice giving a compliment. Oh, wow, that book is so awesome. Um, do you mind if I help look for pictures of extreme port, sports? And you can say, um, do you mind showing me what your favorite one is? And so that's a compliment that's asking a questions, off, offering to help and assertively asking to join. So you guys can pause this here and practice if you want to, and if not, we can just move on. Okay, so today you learned and practiced skills to join a group. What are some of the join-in skills? Stand nearby, look and listen, but not too long, give a compliment, ask questions or offer help, ask respectfully to join, to play or join in and be assertive. That's a lot of stuff to remember. What could you do to help someone join your group? Notice that someone wants to join. Either say yes to a request to join in or ask the person to join in. Help people feel included. Think of a time during the rest of today or this week when you can use skills to join or help someone join a group or game here at school. So I want you to think about this. I'm thinking that maybe even maybe in specials, depending on just making sure you're also social distancing, distancing Right, so um, I'm also thinking about recess or maybe even lunch um, that you can, so think about times you can help somebody join um, something here at school and then you can tell your partner your ideas. If you have some ideas, you can take some time right now and tell them. Um, if not, we're gonna move forward. And then there is a book that we're going to listen to called Just Ask. Um, by Sonia Sotomayor and Rafael Lopez, okay? Well, hello, welcome little readers. Today we'll read aloud is my favorite book for the year so far. It's called Just Ask. Be different, be brave, be you by Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. The illustrations are by Rafael Lopez. Now, if you know Rafael Lopez, you know the illustrations are going to be amazing. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Sonia. My friends and I are planting a garden. Gardens are magical places. Thousands of plants bloom together. But every flower, every berry, and every leaf is different. Each has a different smell, different color, different shape, and different purpose. Some flowers need lots of sunlight. Others thrive in the shade. Some have to be trimmed regularly, while others are better off left alone. Some trees and flowers are more fragile, and others are more hardy. Kids are all different too. Some of us are in a hurry, and others take more time. Some of us be shy and quiet, while others are chatty and loud. Some of our differences are easy to spot. Others take longer to notice. Each of us grows in our own way. So if you are curious about other kids, just ask. Not everyone is comfortable answering questions about themselves, but I don't mind. What am I doing? Several times a day, I prick my finger to measure the sugar in my blood, and I give myself shots of medicine called insulin. I do this because I have diabetes and my body doesn't make insulin naturally like other people's. Even though this can sometimes hurt, I gather all of my courage to do it to be healthy. Do you ever need to take medicine to be healthy? I do. My name is Raphael, and I have asthma, which means I sometimes have trouble breathing. When that happens, I take a break and use an inhaler with medicine to make breathing easier. 
Quiet time helps me slow down and catch my breath. My inhaler is like a tool to help my body. Do you use a tool to help your body? I'm Anthony, and I use a wheelchair to get around. Even though I can't run with my legs, I can go super fast. How do you get from place to place? My name is Madison, and my guide dog Lucky helps me get places safely because I'm blind. My friend Arturo is blind too. He uses a cane to get around. Even though he can't see, we strengthen our other senses and notice lots of details others may miss. We can hear with our ears, smell with our noses, and feel with our hands. How do you use your senses? I'm BJ. I learn about the world differently because I can see, but I can't hear. I'm deaf. Most of the time, I communicate with people using my face and hands through sign language. It's cool to know another language. I also love reading and writing. What about you? I'm Bianca, and I have dyslexia. So I have to work really hard and take my time when I'm reading and writing words. Sometimes I use computer programs to help me. I love learning by doing things. My imagination is full of ideas, and I'm very good at making art from the pictures I see in my mind. Are you really good at something? I'm great at dinosaurs. I know all about them. I'm Jordan, and I have autism. Organizing and counting all my toy dinosaurs again and again makes me feel calm. My classmate, Tiana, also has autism, but it's different for her. She doesn't talk, but I like to talk. I especially like to talk about dinosaurs. What do you like to talk about? For me, listening comes more easily than talking, and I'm a really good listener. My name is Ayn, and I speak with a stutter, so I sometimes repeat a word or get stuck when I try to say it. It may take me a little longer to express myself, and sometimes I'm too shy to talk, but I understand everything that's going on. Do you ever wonder if people understand you? I do. My name is Julia. Sometimes I wiggle or make sounds that I can't control because I have Tourette syndrome. People may look at me funny because they think I'm not paying attention or just acting out. But it's not true. I am listening. I don't always like having to explain. It frustrates me. But it helps when I tell people that it's just what my body does. Do you ever feel frustrated? My name is Manuel and I have Attention Deficient Hyperactivity Disorder. It is also called ADHD. I can get frustrated when I really feel the need to move around, even though I'm supposed to sit still. When my teachers and friends are patient with me if I forget something or get distracted, I can get myself back on track. What's helpful to you? I'm Nolan. It's helpful to me when the food I eat has a clear label that says it is not free because I am allergic to nuts. They can make me so sick that I would have to go to the hospital if I ate any, even by accident. So I always tell people about my allergy and ask if any food has nut ingredients. Speaking up keeps me healthy. How do you use your voice? I love to sing and I love to talk. I love to make new friends and be included. I am Grace. I was born with Down syndrome. Kids like me with Down syndrome have an extra building block called a chromosome in our bodies. But we are all different from each other too. I can do almost anything any other kid can do, though learning new things can take some time. One way I learn is to ask questions. What helps you learn? It's me, Sonia again. I ask questions too. When something seems different or new, I just ask my parents or my teachers, and they help me to understand, especially if my friends don't feel ready to explain. This is what I've learned. Imagine if all of the plants in this garden were exactly the same. Like what if we only could grow peas? That would mean no strawberries or cucumbers or carrots. It might also mean no trees or roses or sunflowers. Just like in our garden, all of the ways we are different make our neighborhood our whole world really more interesting and fun. And just like all of these plants, each of us has unique powers to share with the world and make it more interesting and richer. What will you do with your powers?
Thank you so much for listening, little readers. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Happy reading! See you next time!